What's the word, y'all? Okay, y'all know. On this channel, we tend to overreact. It's part of the format of doing like a near daily recap series, right? When a team is on a three-game win streak, I come on here and I'm an optimistic person, so I talk about their three-game win streak. People have recently been tweeting at me something they call the for real curse. Um, when I talk good about a team, and then they immediately go on a losing streak. So, I'm just going out on the record and saying that the for real curse is not real. But one of the teams that they've been pointing to is the New York Knicks because now they're on the losing streak. And I was just talking about them being okay. So yeah, the identity of the New York Knicks um, flipped completely from last year. So today they had the first game against the Charlotte Hornets. And Kimba Walker came out guns blazing. 17 points against his former team. Julius Randle and RJ Barrett struggled to start off. So that should have been the call to sign in my mind that this is not about to be a Knicks blowout win. Because they also need contributions from other people other than Kimba Walker. Second half comes around and the Charlotte Hornets, they go crazy, right? And that's the second game in a row where the Knicks end up losing and then Tom Thibodeau does the platoon like substitutions. Last game, he took his starting unit out of the game and let the bench run for the entire fourth quarter. They end up losing that game because a lot of the time those players ended up being gassed. Derrick Rose had a very good one, but they got very gassed. And this one, he tried to do something similar because the starting unit of the New York Knicks has been terrible. We're going to talk about that. Where he allowed the bench to get them back into the game in the third quarter, or I guess late third quarter, early fourth quarter, but they started to get super tired and he brought back in Julius and he brought back in this player and this player and immediately when Julius got back on the court things went in the favor of the Charlotte Hornets hey if ever y'all are on Twitter and y'all see a crazy stat that are that is like relevant to today's slate of games please uh, tweet it at me because I, I'll be missing some of these things but this is a tweet from um, an analytics Knicks account Julius Randle entered the game for Obi Toppin in a 93-93 game with three minutes and 44 seconds remaining the Hornets went on an 11-3 run from there on to close out the win. Julius was a minus 30 in the second half. A minus 30 in, in the half. And this is what I've seen in these last two games from the New York Knicks. The starting unit has been so bad, they don't talk on defense. They don't do anything that, that made the Knicks the 4C, 5C, whatever it was last season. They sacrificed quite a bit by bringing in Kimball Walker and Evan Fournier on the defensive side of the ball, but I didn't think it was going to be this bad. Because right now, standing on this season, they have the fourth best offense, but the defense is 24th. Last year, the Knicks were closing now 93 to 94 games, and this season, they can't stop anybody. This is to, according to Stat News. Um, the starting unit for the New York Knicks are a minus 78 in the minutes they've played together, that is the worst by any five-man lineup. That lineup currently has the worst defensive rating in NBA history. The history of basketball. And listen, let me show you something. This is funny that I'm looking this up because this article literally shows a tweet from me. <laughs> it's, it's my tweet. So this is all the way back in March. I tweeted, what's the worst lineup your favorite team has ever started? I showed an example but people were throwing campaign. This is before Cameron Payne was a good NBA player. Justin Holiday, Denzel Valentine, Paul Zipser, Felicio. You trying to tell me this lineup was, was better defensively than the lineup I just read you? And listen, man, I try to be nice to everybody. Like, legitimately, try to be nice to every fan base. That's not a team I dislike. So, when the Knicks lost that game, I, I pulled the... Uh, a trick out of um, World Wide Wob's bag, and I said, Knicks fans, vent to me. This is a safe place. I was just trying to be a dude that was showing some some hospitality to an organization that's right now is down on themselves because last year they were so good and this year they've been subpar. And then the Bulls went out on national TV and looked terrible and now people are saying, can he vent to me, Bulls fans? I was trying to be nice and y'all done turned it personal, huh? <laughs> Y'all done turned it personal. I don't like that. All right, let's, let's transition to the Bulls game because I know that's why a lot of y'all are here. I've mentioned this on videos before. When it comes to my team specifically, I never get too high and I never get too low. And that's that's how like games like this when we're on national TV and we get spanked, I'm just like, hey, it is what it is. You know what I'm saying? It is what it is. Once that ticker hits 0, 0, 0, whether it be a blowout win or a blowout loss, I'm like, hey, it's whatever. I got, I got a job to do. I have to record this video. Imagine. Imagine if I was so hurt about this game. I wouldn't be able to record right now. You know what I'm saying? 
Uh, shout out to the Warriors. I made a whole video about them like a couple nights ago. So if you want me to see me deep dive into the Warriors, please watch that video. Um, what I will say about the Bulls, this is about to be a tough road trip because we got the Clippers on Sunday and then the Lakers on Monday or something like that. And not having Vucevic, if you didn't know he's out with the virus, um, is really hurting. And you saw that in our offense. Now, the Warriors defense is amazing. I'm not, not discrediting them, but we would have been way better offensively if Vucevic was in the lineup. Um, and some of our biggest acquisitions, you know, Lonzo Ball and DeMar DeRozan had terrible games. Something like their worst games uh, as a part of this team. And Steph Curry is a cheat code. I already said he's my MVP so far. And I'm trying to figure out if Draymond is my defensive player of the year. Because the, the Warriors defense has been amazing, and a lot of it is by committee, but Draymond individually, even if he's not, like, clamping up your best player, his IQ on the court defensively is why... He's he's in my top three of defense player of the year right now. I'll just say that. Okay, so we talked about the Knicks and their struggles right now. Another team that was a playoff team last season that is really, really struggling is the Atlanta Hawks. And right now, I think this put them at a six-game losing streak. Six-game losing streak. Now, they are at the probably the roughest part of their schedule like that they'll ever see. So they lost to, um, they lost to Denver. <laughs> And then they got Milwaukee like tomorrow or in a couple days. So right now they're they're in it. But their previous losses were the Jazz, the Warriors, the Suns, the Jazz again, and then the Nets. They've lost six games in a row to six very, very good teams. So th this is what makes it very confusing to me because I watched all of this game and, and we will talk about the Nuggets just being amazing. Shout out to Bones Highland. He has been blowing my expectation out of the water. I was listening to a podcast before the season started and they were talking about the rookie class and somebody that's really in touch with the Nuggets was like, hey, they, we think Bones is going to play minutes very early on and be very impactful. And today might have been his best individual game. 15 points, four assists, six, six rebounds, didn't turn the ball over. He looks like an absolute steal and a stud. But the Atlanta Hawks, like, I, I've watched them closely in the past couple games. Trey Young's been good. John Collins is good today. But other than that, and you know what? I actually, actually screenshotted somebody's tweet. Matthew at Atlanta, the city said, bro, I don't even know what to say or what to complain about. These games have been confusing. And that is exactly what I think about when, I, when I'm watching the Atlanta Hawks. Now, a couple days ago, Trey Young said that, hey, playing in the regular season has been boring so far. I got a taste of the playoffs. We got all the way to the conference finals. And so far, it ain't been hitting the same because we were at like Madison Square Garden in the, in the playoffs telling them, to sh you know what I'm saying? Um, and that's maybe part of it, but they also on a six game loser streak and the toughest part of their schedule. But if you're a playoff team, you should win against tough teams too. But this is also a team that started off the season like 14 and 20 something. So I don't, I don't know what to think about the Atlanta Hawks right now. They are the most confusing team in the league right now. Um, and, and you know, what, what was the, the jump starter for them last season was getting rid of Lloyd Pierce. You're not about to fire Nate McMillan. You just extended him, didn't you? But what I will say, hey, I like stirring the pot just a little bit. You know what I'm saying? But I'm like my James Harden, Steph Curry. Um, if this continues, one thing you can say about the Atlanta Hawks, they got a ton of assets over there. I'm just saying. I'm just saying they got a ton of assets over there. And and Kevin Herter had zero or two points today. Cam Wright is kind of catfish, catfished me earlier in the season because he started off off that bench really solid. And I was like, oh, snap. He about to be a, a six-man of the year candidate. And let me I don't even know what his counter stats say, but he don't feel like he's impacting the game positively. Shooter splits ain't that bad. Uh, 12 points per game, 41 from the field, 38% from three. So there, um, we're at the part of the season, 14, 15 games in. There's going to be games on a slate where I see and I tell myself I will not watch a single second of that. Today, that was Portland Trailblazers versus the, the Rockets. And I hate to say this. I hate to say this because it turned out to be a really good game. I didn't watch much of Bucks, 70, uh, Bucks Celtics until we got to like the fourth quarter. So I saw... You know, the ending where Dennis Schroeder was going off and he was getting MVP chance. But I didn't watch enough of it to really tell y'all my real life opinions about it. My Like, I saw that Giannis was a late scratch. And I saw the starting lineup of this team. And I told myself I would rather focus on other games. It happened to be an overtime game, so I missed out. A game that I, <laughs> I decided um, to watch closely... I, I, listen, listen, when there's so many games on, it's impossible to predict what's going to be a good game and what's going to be a bad game. I saw Suns versus Grizzlies on the on the, the schedule, and I was like, you know what? I really like watching John Morant. The Suns are on the, on a win streak after their 1-3 and three start. I'm going to watch this game, and it's going to be a good... It was not even... It wasn't even... The final score ended up being 119-94. to 94. It wasn't even that close. And And... 
it's so crazy that the Memphis Grizzlies defense is as bad as it is. I don't I don't know how they can expect to be a, a playoff team in the in the the Western Conference if they're playing defense to this level. They are the worst defensive team in the league, y'all. I would have not expected them to be the worst defensive team in the league based on based on their roster. A game that was unnecessarily close was the Brooklyn Nets beating the Pelicans. I turned this one off because at one point the Nets were up by 20. And the Pelicans look like the worst team in the league, but the Pelicans fall hard. And that's all you can really ask for for a team that's missing their best two players. Um, just fight hard. It don't matter who you're going against, go out there and fight hard. And they had a lot of momentum in this one. But guess who came to play? James Harden, Mr. Washed. Um, some people were saying 50, what was it, 50 something percent of people were saying that James Harden was washed after three games of the season. Well, he came to play and he had ice in his veins and he iced this one out. 15 free throw attempts. Now, my boy Herb. I made a video and I was talking about Herb Jones' defense. And you know what? He wasn't terrible defensively today. But it's hard to guard James Harden. That's all I will say. It's hard to guard James Harden and then eventually guard Kevin Durant. The, the, the Ricky was in trouble today. I, I just say that. I hate this, bro. I got so much love for so many players on the Kings. Part of that is because I have a whole King series on my other channel where I'm playing with them in 2K22. But De'Aaron Fox has been one of my favorite players since he got drafted. Um, I just love the speed and just get into the basket like that. This season has been terrible for him. Um, and in this game, they were up by double digits, if I'm not mistaken, going into the fourth. Shout out to Lou Dor putting putting De'Aaron Fox to the Dorcher tank chamber. And and the crazier part is not just a rip up, because you you very rarely see a player get ripped up with five seconds to go. But the crazier part is Lou Dort went coast to coast with it and decided, you know what? I don't want to pull it out or find somebody else. I'm going to take a heavily contested layup and finish it and flex on people and close out the game. Um, the OKC Thunder, one game into the season. I was saying, like, I don't know if I'm going to watch them this season. They've turned that around. And they're basically on pace for the same amount of wins they were at last year before they shut Shea down. And this is, the, this is what OKC and their organization has to figure out. Is it worth it to shut these players down? My personal opinion is... Is just let the boys develop and play. I, I listen if like you can find diamonds in the rough. You got a million draft picks anyway. You know what I'm saying. So if you got the ninth pick instead of the fifth pick, you can probably still get somebody up. Now I understand you want Chet Holmgren or the Palo guy. I don't know how to pronounce his name, but I've watched his highlights. I understand you want one of those dudes, but you also want to develop the players that will be around those dudes eventually. And shutting down Lou, shutting down Shea, twenty. 30 games to the season is probably not the smartest thing to do. Let these boys hoop because they could be fun. Um, but back to my Kings talk before we get out of here. I'm just so disappointed in De'Aaron. Um, he just, it, it's, it's, it's frustrating as a De'Aaron Fox fan to see him come out and perform this bad. Now, last game, he had a great individual game, but the team looked and then they, they, they lost that one. This one, he looked bad and the team looked bad but won that game. They have to do something because it's getting to the point where even even I've seen some Kings fans on the timeline giving up. And that's saying a lot considering all the things that the Kings fans have been through that they're starting to give up now.